Johnson with her head up all the way, finds Bree Hall, automatic tonight. A career high 21 for Bree Hall, and South Carolina leads by nine. Wickersham downfield. Did Amir Hall get his feet in? Yes, he did. Back to back, you all, but he interceptions, and it's the former spider, Amir Hall. He's going to tell him about it. Great dames, interception by the think this is personal for Amir Hall? Bill Nessel, the defensive coordinator, said, oh, I'm sure it's just any other game for Amir. I'm sorry, Bill, I'm not buying it. Early here in this ball game. Data lag. This is well hit. Gregory at the wall. He got it. Zach Gregory saves a third Missouri run at the wall and left. Judd missed all four of her three-point tries on Monday morning against Belmont. Nothing wrong with not being a morning player. Exactly. It's kind of an odd, an odd time to play for sure, an 11.30 game, uh, something that, you know, most college athletes aren't necessarily used to, so I'm sure they talked about that a lot in the locker room. That was the problem. If Judd plays night game, she's money. Three for three starts. She has eight points in the first four minutes. Judd wants it in the corner. Oh, look at that. Put Sawyer on the ground. Aston Judd. Judd, not again. Not again! Wow. Aston Judd is in the zone. Ball's loose on the exchange. Poffenbarger picks it up. Are you kidding me? Reese Poffenbarger, the magic man, strikes again. Touchdown, Great Day. Undefeated number one, South Carolina returns to Mizzou Arena. All too often, a house of horrors for the juggernaut Gamecocks and the site of their last regular season loss more than two years ago. Tonight, the homestanding Tigers hope they can put one more scare into the nation's top team. With Jordan Roundtree, I'm Nate Gatter. South Carolina has dominated this entire league the last decade and for the most part gotten the better of Missouri, but for whatever reason, not in this building. You're watching the NCAA FCS Championship on ESPN. It's an all-CAA affair. The Richmond Spiders back in the second round for the second consecutive season. But today, they've traveled to a cold and gray Casey Stadium in Albany, where they'll find a suffocating Great Dames defense that has dominated at home this year. Get a look at the left side of the FCS playoff bracket. The winner of this game will advance the next weekend to play the winner of fourth-seeded Idaho and Southern Illinois. With that, we say hello in the booth. He's Adam Brenneman. I'm Nate Gatter. So glad to have you with us. No doubt, you Albany as the number five seed will feel confident in this game, but they're facing a red-hot Richmond team that's won seven in a row. We could not have asked for a better matchup. Both the Albany and Richmond have dynamic quarterbacks. This game has all the makings to come down to which team has the football last. And of course, when you're thinking about which team has the football last, you're thinking about the quarterbacks. Two of the best in the country, but they do it in very different ways. Richmond quarterback Kyle Wickersham will be the leader of this offense this afternoon. Looks more like a running back at times and a quarterback will lower his shoulder and get extra yardage he's gonna have to make sure that ball gets out quick against the u albany pass rush that's one of the best in the country meanwhile reese poffenbarger last year's jerry rice award runner-up he can do it with his legs but it's no secret his best weapon is that right arm poffenbarger is a gunslinger u albany back on offense from the 20 after richmond drove the, the ball 74 yards 42 of them on u albany but came up empty on a missed 24 yard andrew lopez field goal Reese Poffenbarger hands off for the first time to Griffin Woodell. His first carry goes for five. You Albany, a rare three and out on that opening possession. Maybe running the ball will help the Danes find a little rhythm. Yeah, they got to get Woodell going in this game. Former walk-on has high end speed at the running back position. Coach just told us he clocked 22 miles per hour on his GPS in a game this season. The guy can roll. A walk-on who redshirted last year, earned a scholarship in August. And it didn't take long this season to earn the starting job. Woodell gets it again, has a gaping hole, bounces to the outside, and look at that speed. Griffin Woodell into Richmond territory. Tristan Wheeler tracks him down all the way at the 36. Watch Hutchinson. Number 65 here with the great block, the left tackle. Woodell's able to break it for a big one. And a deep ball right away into the end zone. Knocked away from Juliet Hicks, incomplete. 
A critical intervention defensively by D'Angelo Stocker, the redshirt freshman to the outside. That's a throw that Poffenbarger has to, be, for into player. has to be more accurate with. He has his receiver open for a touchdown, under throws him, which allows Stocker, the defensive back, to make a play on the football. They're looking at Stocker, who stayed down for a moment in the end zone. Shows you the, the speed and skill set of Julian Hicks. And Stocker can flat out fly, and Hicks had at least a step. Poffenberger's got to put this ball more in front of Hicks. See how Hicks has to turn around there and stop his forward momentum? Nice play by Stocker. Good hand on the football. Breaking it up. Second down and ten. Stocker the great game. Not going to get it. You all are still trying to get on the track in the passing game. But two carries for Waddell on this drive have gone for 45 combined yards. Second and ten at the 35. Four man rush. Poffenbarger deep again for Hicks. In the end zone, incomplete. And went right after Chance Graves, the red shirt junior from Culpeper, Virginia, who was in off the bench to take Stocker's spot as the boundary corner. And Graves stepped up to the challenge. Yeah, that's the second underthrown football here. Poffenbarger has his receiver Hicks open. See again, he has to stop and come back to the football. It's not much. You can barely tell, but just that. That, that a little bit of hesitation by Hicks allows the defensive back to make the play. Poffenbarger has to put that ball in the back of the end zone and, and let his receiver run underneath it. Poffenbarger started just one of five for one yard passing. He's missed on his last four throws. Marquise Dietz is the motion man. Third and ten. Poffenbarger to the outside. It's over everybody. Brevin Easton slipped and went down. And the Richmond defense holds at least for the moment, but this is tricky territory for you all. Pass intended for number 13, Brevin Easton. At least for the moment, is staying on the field. Poffenbarger wanted Brevin Easton, his receiver out wide. Easton fell down on the route, like you said, Nate. I think he would have had him open for the first down if he wouldn't have slipped. We talked about it earlier. It's wet out there on the field. I was down there pregame. It's not raining now, but it's been raining all morning. It's having an effect on the game already. And wide receivers in the formation for Poffenbarger on fourth and ten. In these fourth down moments, Marquise Dietz is a machine. First down machine. He's the, the receiver closest to the quarterback at the top. Poffenbarger with a man at his face completes the Hicks for a first down inside the 25. Hicks completes a number one, Julian Hicks. Well, when you have a quarterback like Poffenbarger, that's why you go for it on fourth down, because he missed on his last and four throws, and he comes back on fourth down and delivers a strike. Look at that accurate football U with velocity to the boundary. Really nice throw by Poffenbarger. The big first down pickup for you, Albany. And Hicks only becomes a bigger and bigger weapon down here in the red zone. He has 11 touchdowns this year, third among receivers in the FCS. Revan Easton has nine. He's seventh in the country. Those two alone have accounted for 20 of Poffenbarger's FCS leading 31 passing touchdowns this year. Alexander in motion, he gets the pop pass. Roy Alexander, stiff arm on Tristan Wheeler. He put the All-American on the ground and he's out of bounds inside the 20 with a flag at the end of the play. Roy Alexander. It's gonna be a face right mask against play. Richmond. Really good play to side. Face mask, defense, number 30. The guy who makes this play happen is 72 Murata, the offensive lineman, with a big block allowing Roy Alexander to get to the edge. Then Alexander breaks the tackle here. Watch Tristan Wheeler, number 30, grabbing the face mask with the right hand. He's just trying to make a tackle. But a good call for the official had a good angle on it. Over a thousand yards for Roy Alexander across his first couple of seasons in purple. Missed most of this year with a leg injury. Suffered at Marshall in that near upset win for the Danes. Waddell spaced to the outside. Waddell turns on the Jets to the five, to the pylon! Touchdown! It's a 